trying to trying to uh, uh, stop these uh, folks on the jet skis and ask them to slow down. And um, the arguments and um, insults and hurting. I mean, I, I felt bad for the whole person because they just said, you know, you can't, you, you, you know, you can't order me to do anything, and you don't have no authority here. So th there's a, 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 a very apparent disregard for for the lake and for the, the enjoyment of the lake. And so I think that, um, you know, I think they should be banned. And I, and I think that language should be very clear and specific banning them from the lake. Thank you. Thank you. Before you start, so <clears throat> I'm just looking at interest. Kratiak said he made a statement. How many people sitting there would like to see water uh, jet skis banned? A note. A note. You tried to ban them before, and the state stepped in and said you can't ban I, them. I'm just, so I'm just getting a feel of the room. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Okay. I, I'm just getting a feel of the right. Yes, ma'am. You? Sally Robinson, I would respectfully request that letter A, that the term rental be replaced with powerboat. Uh, this town only registers powerboats. You have no knowledge of whether somebody's in a super boat or a 27 foot boat. So you're basically asking for an honor system. Okay. That people no longer put their 27 foot boats in. Because vessels, aside from power boats, do come in that length. I row 10 months of the year on Columbia Lake, and I row in a 27.5 vessel. And I, it is not registered by you. So you would have no knowledge of the length of my vessel, nor would you have cause to limit the length of my vessel. And if I purchased another one 10 years from now, when I need a replacement, you would be discriminating against me because I'm a lightweight and I have to be in a that type of a boat. So rowing vessels are purchased based on your body weight. So the length of it has to do with the buoyancy and the ballast that are put in the mold for the boat. It's silly for this committee to get into that language but you're opening yourself up to more confusion. We don't register personal water. We don't register, well, not personal watercraft that's in jet skis, but we don't register anything that's not powered um, by anything that, if it's self-propelled, we don't register that. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that to me? Thank you. In the beginning, I'm thinking I might need like a 42 footer if I wanted to go <laughs> kind of dumb. <laughs> no, actually it's smaller. <laughs> yeah. Lisa. Sure. You want to I'm going to put you over here. Okay. okay, thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. Your name, please. Carol O'Neill, 104187. <laughs> And it's not in the paper that you passed out tonight, but the ones that came with the ripples talked about needing a license and something else to drive a motorboat down the road. And we don't know what something else is. And it's, and if it's not in this paper, I can't tell you what it said. But there was a certificate, something taken by DE, and, and then another thing. You, you were saying it was in the summary? What's that called? You have a number at the yeah. DEP. It happens through your boating license, your hunting license, and things like that. That might be what you're implying. State boat. State, state, state boat. State boat. State 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 they still use the same number. And, and I, I, I forget what it's called. Where do you get that? And when you get a big safe boat and you have a particular number, you're also issued, uh, if you have a hunting license, they'll use that same serial number. That may be very neat. I don't know. That's a good statement. I think I know the difference. Thank you, Henry. I suspect you're referring to the safe voting certificate. That's the same thing as the license. Oh, okay. The license, the safe voting certificate is the title that the state puts on it. Right? Uh, we colloquial think of it as like a driver's license. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Thank you. 
You have to produce both of them? No, there's no the same thing. <clears throat> yes. I'd like to speak. I'd uh, like to give me your name and address. Thank you very much. I apologize. Mark Hartman, and I'm speaking not only for myself, um, from 52 to 87, but the family at 15 Sleepy Hollow Road. Um, I sit here as the owner of the first gas ski to be operated on Columbia Lake in the summer of 1986. And the town in 1987, when everybody in the state was banning jet skis, tried to ban, ban jet skis from Columbia Lake. I use the generic term jet ski, but the proper terminology is personal watercraft, which is a vessel that's an inboard vessel, which powers a jet drive as propulsion. And it's designed to be used by somebody that sits, stands, or kneels on the vessel as compared to a jet boat where you sit, stand, or kneel inside the vessel. So if it's an inboard vessel, the motor's can be enclosed with the hull, there's a jet drive, it's, it's the main source of propulsion, and you're sitting here standing or kneeling on it instead of in it, that's what makes it a personal watercraft. Generically, we call them jet skis. Just like we generically call the plastic strips from Walgreens band-aids, but that's not the proper term. So this question has come up before. And again, like any vessel operator, there are those that are very responsible, and there are others that maybe not as much so. And that would become an enforcement issue. I don't know the um, I don't know the abilities that the Marine Corps will have, what their level of um, law enforcement abilities are on Columbia Lake, whether they can issue summonses or tickets themselves, or they have to refer that to our resident state trooper. Uh, I don't know the details, but <clears throat> on this particular question and some of the things tonight, please use me as a knowledgeable resource uh, in that I've been instructing the Connecticut Voting License Class, the Voting License Standards Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation since 1987. And uh, anything that's specific to the laws and regulations, I might be able to offer some, uh, some insight. Thank you. Thank you. But in hearing his statement, it's not, I hate jet skis. It's that those who don't use them correctly and within the rules that are placed upon them on the lake, they cause unsafe uh, on the water. There's more potential for injury. And if, if, if a jet ski meets a skier or if a jet ski meets a boat, it could be <clears throat> dead. And, and I agree with them. My problem is, as I sit here, is in your state, my authority, authority to do what I would like to do, I have none. Okay? And I said to Henry and Lake Management, LMAX, when they came to us about these things, if, if somebody and I'd like it to be me, doesn't have teeth in these things. It's really, what good are they? So we're efforting to be able to work closely with the state police to find out exactly what we can do because, sir, it was up to me. First infraction, I'd have them off the limit. Okay. So the issue is not, and I don't have any issue with jet skis. I do have an issue, people swimming in the wrong area without flotation devices, without some sort of marking, people boating irresponsibly, people, whatever it is, when it causes, when it could cause safety for innocent people, as well as those act, acting recklessly, I got a real problem. So, Henry. And I, I, I count on page 5, 190-7, penalties for offenses. It has been uh, greatly enhanced. There's a $200 penalty now instead of a $50 uh, penalty. And each violation is a separate violation for a separate 
penalty. And if it continues uh, because of ignoring what the Marine Patrol officer has for a significant period of time, so it was deemed reckless, uh, then they can be taken off the list. And this particular penalty for offenses is the same in each of the three statutes we're going to review, review tonight. They've been made uniform and they've been significantly enhanced in order for them to be taken seriously. And just to supplement that, your name, please. And I'll ask you, Bob, would you like to talk about Yes, Bob, 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 Bob. Um, Just to supplement that, Henry, the Marine Patrol can also issue. Um, recommendations to the state trooper for violations of the voting laws, but right. have separate fines that are associated with each incident. Correct. Thank you. So, so that's that's the other part of the So, so when it says the Marine Patrol officer at the request of the Marine Patrol officer, um, I does that mean that the Marine Patrol officer can issue a citation or not? I, I was under the understanding that they would not. They, have to get they can issue a warning. warning. They can issue a warning. And honestly, you know, if I don't think they have to issue a warning, it doesn't say that they have to. They can recommend, they can recommend come right to the state police and say, we need a citation. So, so it really, so what we're really saying then is, is that this really depends on the ability of the Marine Patrol officer to enforce it. And if they can't, does, does the Lake Association have the authority or the ability to say, well, you know, we can't be out there 24 seven. Uh, this type of craft you know, is, is, is it's not something that's suitable. Um, I believe that you can look forward to some people becoming poster child, uh, so you know, no audience, uh, ordinances this summer if they're not adhered to. Uh, everybody is familiar with what you've said about how our Marine Patrol officers have been uh, treated in the past, and that's going to stop. It, we can restrict boats on the, the lake only uh, under the DEP guidelines of preventing something from being won. They control the operation of, of motor boats and other vessels once they're on the water. But because we have no public access to the lake, we can control what can be won on the lake. Uh, I, I guess the further point I would make is, is that when these things are in operation, it really um, restricts the ability to swim. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of people that do laps on the lake, and um, they're hard to stay. And when you're going 45, 55 miles an hour on one of these personal watercraft, um, you know, it, it really, it, it's it's really preventing other people from the enjoyment of the lake that they're entitled to. And I think there's a full number of people that are, are doing this and if they're using it, you know, I mean, I, the best situation would be for enforcement, but if it can't be enforced uh, effectively, I think we should consider banning that particular type of craft, craft because it lends itself to, you know, very irresponsible behavior and it impacts Everybody. So, thank you for your comment. Thanks, everyone. Sarah, I think one of the issues we have um, kind of a turnover in residency on the lake, and we have people here in the town using the lake. I think um, communication is an issue, and I would love to see a um, not just a um, email from the town, but something in the mailboxes for everyone that's a resident on the lake and then hand it out to people when they launch something at the public beach. Okay. Um, because I think sometimes it's just a lack of knowledge as opposed to being um, abusive unintentionally. Yeah. 
Judy Preston, five Lakewood Lane. If the assuming that the ordinances might would eventually be adopted, um, the with edu proper education um, about the the expectations and using personal um, the right um, step stage. Uh, will the Lake Patrol be sufficiently staffed that they will be enabled and really supported? In attempting to enforce the new ordinance, or are there any adjustments that will needed there? Well, I appreciate the question. And we have gone to a more mature over the last few years and this year, a more mature and more experienced Marine Patrol. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> and this is not for anybody here, I'm sure. But let me tell you, this lake belongs to everybody in town. And everybody has the right to use it. And there are some people who feel they have more rights than others to act how they want because of where they live, how they are, how affluent they are, who they are, who they know. And the bottom line is, I don't care, okay? My next fight is with the fishermen, but the good news is I ain't fighting. They're, we're in good shape there. It's our job as the board to protect that lake and protect the people who use the lake, okay? So all these actions, I'm telling you, I would love to be able to hand down the fines. $200 to people on some people in this town, that's not a problem. Catch me, okay? That's the attitude. And the Marine Patrol officers who have been swore at, disrespected, I hear about it. <clears throat> and I'll be meeting with the state trooper every week. And if there's a list of things that have to be given, uh, uh, tickets too, they're going to get them. They're going to get them. So whether it's you or your kids or your grandkids, I love it. Well, you're not talking to me because my kids wouldn't do that, but <laughs> my kids wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it twice, I'll tell you, because the first time I got notified, they'd be off the lake. And my kids would be. So this is why we have these here. And this is, I'm, I'm glad you're all here. It's a lake that we all can be proud of. But know this, I love your suggestion of handing it out to me. I'd stick it right on the windshield if I could, okay? I'd have everybody who launched a jet ski sign something that says, I have read it and I get it. I'd love to be able to take the town vote in the dead of night, latch onto somebody's boat and tow it out of there for them because <laughs> they deserve it, okay? We all have a part in this. Everybody has a part in this. If you see somebody who's not acting right on the lake, jot it down. Maybe it's not the Marine Patrol who's telling me that, but I can certainly put in a phone call, knock on a door or say, hey, I'm just saying it might've been you, they might have got a number wrong, but everybody has to obey these. And the next time, you'll get a citation. We have to do our best collectively. I'm fighting with the amount of rain that's coming in and what's happening in people's driveways and everything else. The bottom line, people say to me, well, you can't do that. But I can. This is a community where neighbors take care of neighbors. And while I'm sitting here, it's going to be neighbors taking care of neighbors. If we have to do things, which means I have to get on a boat and ride with Marine Patrol, I got no problem. No problem getting out there and saying, he told me to stop it. Stop it. But people say, why, why do you want to do this or do this? It's neighbors taking care of neighbors. We're a great community, and we're going to keep it that way. I want people to enjoy the lake. I want it to be safe on the lake. There's rules on the lake. We're going to obey them best we can. 
and we're gonna have fun and we're gonna do it safely. Okay, so I like the things you bring up. I appreciate you being here. We're gonna do some educational material. Okay, I understand 27 footers. There is a clause in there that says if you have a 27 footer, you're still okay for life. <laughs> I, but the next person who needs to want to get on a robot, like, yeah. well, and then I'm not. Yeah. Your grandfather, don't worry. So the next person sitting here. But I understand. Thank you very much. Anybody else? <clears throat> yeah. Joshua Hoffman, uh, 126, Route 87. First, thank you for your comments about protecting the lake. I agree with that. We all have a part of that. I agree with this lake being a wonderful resource for everybody in the town. Um, there was a proposal, I believe, uh, earlier when these changes were discussed of altering the horsepower limits. And I believe what's written here is that the current procedures are no change in the horsepower limit than the current proposal. I'd like to just offer that the idea of raising the outboard limit to either the same as what is the current inboard limit of 150 or to 115 would be a nice step in actually protecting the limit. Because what's available now, what happens now at the lower horsepower limits, the horsepower is not absolute. What's in one engine is not the same. So you have two stroke engines because that at a lower horsepower gives you more power. A four stroke engine that might be a higher number doesn't give you as much, but it's much better for the weight. It's much better for the environment. It's much quieter. But it's less of a nuisance. And by raising that number, you would encourage people to provide four stroke engines that might carry a lot a larger number, but what are safer, better, environmentally better, quieter, and that would be a good change to make. I know that proposal was discussed, and as I see it here, it's not in the current ones, but I think it should. Sorry, your name is Joshua. Joshua. See, I knew that question was coming, so I did a little homework. I asked both dealers, different parts of the state, I've asked people, and this is. I don't know anything. Okay. That's why I do fact finding. Years ago, many years ago, we had higher limits on the boat and the engines on the lake. And our forefathers found that it was detrimental to the lake. Currently, they tell me that a 150 inboard and a 150 outboard is not the same. You get a lot more power by going from 80 to 150, right? It's a small lake. It's a great lake, but it's a small lake. It's 280 acres, maybe. It's a small lake. Okay. Can't increase the speed on that lake. And if you have it available, it's easy to throttle. And I also understand environmentally that it's not good at the bottom of it. I don't know why, but that's what I'm told. When they start getting into way too much that's over my head, I go, so you're telling me it's bad. <laughs> yes, it's bad. Thank you. Hey, folks. Um, this is Brent. He helps to everybody else. Lake management. And they've recommended we keep it the same. <clears throat> so I got to tell you, I'm okay with keeping it the same. Well, if I can, I, I folks, Brent Burnett, 206 Route 87. Um, I appreciate that. Can we Steve. hold up. We'll call you. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Hold on. Yes, sir. I, I agree with that point. That 150 to 150 inboard and 150 outboard is not apples to apples, but neither is 150 to 80 as it currently exists. And there was a discussion of 115 and 150, and that is a more reasonable comparison. Now, the other thing I said, 80 to 150, and I was told it's not so much the speed, it's the power to be able to pull two skiers. And that's what they felt was good enough to pull two skiers to have a good time. As a daily skier, I was disagree. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Who is that? Brent. Brent, go ahead. Brent. Hi, folks. Brent Burnett, 206 Route 87. Um, yeah, this, Steve, I, I also did some research, and I appreciate the perspective there. I'm not an expert also, but I would say suggest I agree with Josh that it is more environmentally friendly 
to have the lower, the higher horsepower limits. What you start seeing is as, as you stress those motors, folks to be able to pull a skier are going full throttle. And that's burning a lot more gas, putting a lot more pollution into our lake. The real difference between a 80 and a 150 and an outboard, given the same boat type. So you take a typical lake 20 foot boat is 15 miles per hour. So we're not talking a dramatic difference. I would, I laugh when you talk about pulling through skiers. I think that's a lot more of a risk than actually a, a boat with a slightly more adequately horse powered engine. I also think that it helps regulate the law better. I think there may be some folks that tweak their boats to try to get that faster horsepower that's also causing damage to the lake. Listen, I was born in Columbia. I love this lake. I'm very passionate about this lake and it's important to protect it. And I think one of the best ways we can do that is by having the horsepower adequate for how it's being used. Thank you. Uh, Dave Vanderbilt, 213, grade Um, What's happening with manufacturing is we're no longer going to be able to uh, buy four cylinder uh, inboards, inboard outboard. They're, they're stopped making. So we're going to end up with pontoon boats and jet skis on the lake and nothing to ski behind because the imports are going to be out. Uh, I rebuild them myself and I get away, I get away with that. But uh, a 10 year old boat, you're starting to see decay and, and things like that. You can't go to a manufacturer and buy a boat. You're, you're, we're not going to have water skiing on the lake anymore. Uh, bringing the horsepower on outboards up uh, will take put that in place and replace those boats. Uh, 80 horsepower water skiing. Uh, Karen can do it. I, I water ski on a, a single ski. I pull the horsepower right down and I just got to like um, anybody over 155. It's going to slow the boat down too much. Uh, as far as getting up with two skiers, no problem. They always have doubles. You can't really slalom with two people. So, you know, we got to catch up to what's happening in the industry and uh, four stroke outboards uh, especially 80s 75 they have no mid-range power so you can't I can't even get up on uh, the older ones maybe when I was younger now I can't um, if you brought it up uh, to 115 for outboards um, you wouldn't see any difference of what you're seeing on the lake right now it's, it, the boats won't be that much faster. They're, they're using the same block, uh, maybe five miles an hour. That's about it. But the torque to get someone up to ski, is, that's what I'm after. Uh, and and it, it's always been a struggle. The inboards, 140, proper way down. You get away with it. I'm building motors every three years because I'm revving so high to try to get us to go. Uh, four stroke outboards are better for everybody. Uh, the smaller ones don't have enough work. They're just not, you could horsepower on a dyno, so many different things on a dyno. You, you know, you, you can't, you really can't compare a two stroke to a four stroke, especially in the mid range where you need it for okay. what we're talking about. Thank you. Um, Mike Armstrong, 95 Lake Road. Um, I paddleboard in the lake probably five days a week when the ice is out. Um, my experience with the jet skis. My personal experience with the erratic behavior is, especially on the weekend, people have a party. They got two jet skis at the dock. People just take them out for a spin. To remedy this for the infraction, you just take down the whole number, the, the registration, issue the citation to the owner. Oh, yeah. And be done with it. You don't have to chase anybody down. It's like, and once people know that this is what's going to happen, all that will stop. Thank you. That's a good. You're, I'm gonna. It's just like a camera on the on the streets. Yeah. And they're coming. Uh, when the camera takes it, they don't go after the driver. They send me the ticket. Yeah. In Washington D.C., we were doing forty and a twenty-five. I, I wasn't even there. Too bad the car was there. So you get the money from them. Okay. So, so thank you. So, a lot of people here. Uh, we got a ton more to go over, don't we? All right. So, we have some things to think about this. Um, 
I'm not voting on this tonight. So we have to look at vessel and, and hotel, paragraph hotel, vessel. You want to make it something different. You want to have other wording in there so we can make sure Ms. Robinson gets her robot. For the return, the power boats in that yeah. particular area. <laughs> Not that. Yeah. I'm going to go back to those who architected this. And then uh, I'd, like, I'd like to look into more of the 115 versus the A. Just look at it. I mean, make a suggestion to you. Uh, you can. I I think we can uh, deal with the vessel issue, uh, the motor boat issue, if the horsepower issue could be, since no change is being made, could be put under further study. But you could proceed tonight to make the other important changes in, in that section and just say that we are going to continue to study the horsepower. Uh, and one of the reasons to have some action tonight uh, uh, and the selectments meeting is uh, afterwards is because we need to uh, have the DEP review your actions uh, and they have 60 days to do that. And if we start that process, we will have ordinances that can be enforced this summer, if we don't start that process, we won't have any of these changes available to us this summer. Mm -hmm. If it reads correctly, if it reads correctly, if it reads correctly, I'm not sure it is correct. That's my problem. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Thank you. We're going to move to uh, Article Three. So we're going to go over these in the second meeting. Um, Article Three, John Dillard, A. Tuckle, and Um Just want to make an observation here. You know, limiting vessels to the length of uh, twenty-six feet, or giving access to the length of twenty-six feet. You know, pontoon boat at twenty-six feet is you know, it's slow to the water and, you know, it's uh, relatively, you know, it's a reasonable size. But, you know, like, uh, I think the fiberglass boat, if you're assuming that the boat go at 26 feet, then rather than holding. Um, so I don't know if you want to consider making, you know, just riding like um, possibly on two boats to 26 feet, uh, maybe less for uh, fiberglass. Um, you know, like golden boulder. Are you putting? Are you putting a uh, you know eighty or one fifty on that to get around Columbia Lake? That big deep draft thing. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. So, but, I mean, if, if you you know if you have an if it's got an outboard, uh, still you know you could put it on the line. I mean. My family actually, you know, was of some controversy back in the 70s because we had one of the first big live boats of the boat. Um, my dad bought a 23 foot classroom, had a 140 inboard outboard. And um, that may be the reason why we have, you know, some of the laws in the back there. Right? I think I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but the size of the lake, the depth of the lake. Yeah, I'm not sure he's putting he's putting big deep draft uh, V's in there. I just and, and I don't think the motors that they put on those 80 or 150 are going to. Uh, we're going to see them on the lake. Yeah, yeah. so I'm pretty secure with that. All right, and then we'll. So, um, all right, we're going over to three. Okay, do I have the other one? Safety regulations on Columbia Lake, Article 3. 
Article 13. David Vanderbilt, yeah. Um, we have a, it's, it's kind of a funny thing where we, where we use, uh, October 1st, you, you, they change the hours that you can use the vote. And that's that's a two week period. It's October 1st, to October 15th when they have the drawdown. I'm not sure if we need to have changing hours, or especially so much warmer lately. Uh, is that, is that what I said? That's not a true thing. About how we're spending such low. Yeah. What you're talking about is when the late drawdown starts? Yeah, late drawdown starts on October 15th and November 1st, depending on whether it's an even year or not. Right. So, so it would be a two week period or a one week period where um, you can't go out on the late after six, six o'clock. That's, that's what I'm talking about. You can't go out after six. And you know, a two week period or a month period. Yeah. So why have you know because it gets darker? Well, it's dark at you know four thirty. Four thirty, but it's dark at eight thirty when you can go out till ten the rest of the year. So it's just I just put it out there. I mean I, it just seems like extra. Can I speak to that? Uh sure. There's no quiet hours on this lake, and there's no consideration of folks that aren't power votes. So in order for me to row, I have to get up before you and try to guess when that is. And I can't row in the dark. So that little window that I could possibly get out there, because that's what I do now. I got to get out of bed at 5 a.m. if I want to row, because otherwise the lake is all power boats. There is not one hour in any day, not even for the sailboats. It used to be just a courtesy on this lake that when the sailboats race, people park their power boats. That does not happen. So my my joy is when it's brought that happen. Because then I can row. And I row and put my rowing shell away on December 15th and took out my kayak. But you don't have any opportunity. The, the lake is loaded with people that have other things besides motorboat. And I love a motorboat, don't get me wrong, but I think there should be room for both. And I'm just saying that little window, a little time in the morning, and it, I can't go until it's, the sun starts to come up and I can see where I'm going. There you go, there's, there's an alternate. Yeah, Alan O'Leal was something to be said. I agree with that comment. Um, so just a general observation on this article, um, section 190-14, and up to three skiers will now be allowed. So that strikes me as, uh, as odd, because, you know, on the one hand, we, we were just talking about horsepower limits. And then we heard, you know, about how difficult it is to be, you know, when you have underpowered boats and so on. And yet we're we're now saying you can have a three skier when we've already decided that we don't have enough horsepower for two skier. Yeah, we asked that. It's mainly for tubing. Because if you can't get three skiers up, we're not gonna worry about you. But if you can get three people on tubes or four people when we only want three, that's what it's for. Well, it says, it says water skiers. And I guess I guess the point, the, the reason I'm bringing that out is because next year we'll be sitting around having this discussion and somebody will say, well, you know, you, you got, it, it allows three water skiers, but you, the rates don't allow the hard power to, to physically do it. I got a year and a half left on this term. Don't worry, I'll sit here and say, no. I know what you're saying. I do know what you're saying. We talked to LMAC about that. They said it's because of the tubing, and I mean, well, I mean, you got to I mean, well, and the other thing too, the EEP and Connecticut boat regulations classify a tuber as a water skier, and we have to use the DEP definitions in here. So that's why it doesn't say three tubers and two water skiers, because the DEP would throw this out. As I told you, uh, mentioned to the selectmen, the DEP has 60 days to work on this afterwards. This 
time around, we informally work with them so that they have reviewed this and changes have been made already to address some of the issues that they required. This was one of them to make sure that we standardize our definitions with what the state uses in its boat manual. So can I just offer another observation, please? Please. So, so in any situation over time, you have what's, what's called boat creep, right? And that's the evolution of how regulations work, right? And, and, and my observation is, is that non-powered users on the lake are at a huge disadvantage today than compared to a generation or two generations ago. And um, and I understand the reason why. But you know, when, when you think go back and think about kind of the origins of the lake and the history and the people that you know this association was first put together, and we didn't have we weren't worrying about 150 horsepower outboards or pulling two, two or three skiers, right? <clears throat> um, the regulations have more such that people that want to use the lake for swimming or rowing, kayaking, uh, the quiet enjoyment have really been, been at a disadvantage for the last couple of generations. <clears throat> and and I, I just see that continuing. And, and I and I and I would urge it to go back and think about, you know, it is forever, but we are disadvantaging a very important uh, cohort here by um, you know the, the discussion of you know 26, seven foot book. I mean that that's not that's not where we came from, and that's not what what I think was the original intent for the for the quiet enjoyment of that lake by by the entire town. So I, I just think that the whole thing needs to be reevaluated in that context. <clears throat> Um, I'm wondering, Henry, you'd be more familiar with this in terms of the expectations of the EEP. Um, can we not insert uh, water skiers and or tubers? I'm going back to the education about the policy. And if you look at it, there are a lot of people who are going to understand that water skiing includes tubing. So I'll just insert a couple of words for clarification. The DEP uh, can be helpful, it can also be bureaucratic. Uh, and, and this is bureaucratic. And uh, Mark Vining spoke earlier this morning. He is teaching all of our people that are getting safe boating certificates that water gear means tuber. Uh, and that's what the DEP is saying. They want to know that anybody who knows water skiing thinks of it as a tuber, whether they're uh, you know, visiting and have a boat on the lake for a month as we allow, or they're a resident in town, tubers or water skiers. And for whatever reason, the DEP doesn't want to have two definitions, and they would knock that regulation out if we uh, put two friends. Well, shame on me for making a claim. No, no, you're very logical. Very logical, but that's the answer. Joshua Hoffman from uh, Route 87. I'm, I'm just a little confused. Are we, is this note increasing the number we're allowing or limiting the number we're allowing? What is it? What is it? Because I'm, my understanding is it's we're currently we're we're about. the three water skiers. My understanding currently is it's it, it is increasing it by one to allow for the likelihood because this has been an enforcement issue of. Uh, three people on a troop, and it's determined, been determined. The state allowed it. It was determined that it, it, it was uh, arbitrary for us to say you couldn't have three people on a troop, and so we have changed it. Uh, it does allow for the possibility of three water skiers if they can be uh, pulled out of uh, the water. Uh, but it's principally focused on tubing. No. If you, if you allow me to, in, in that light, revisit this horsepower issue to kick that horse. We're all set with that. Yes. We're going to discuss, we're going to consider. The idea, I don't want three skiers. I understand. 
But if we're doing that to be in because it was deemed by DEP that our regulations suggest it was arbitrary, certainly that argument of this power applies. If we're doing one to be more in line with what DEP allows, it would it would seem to reason that you would do the, that we would be more inclined to do the other. The DEP is happy with our first call. <laughs> Mr. Bynum, our findings two five two and eighty seven. The correct way to phrase this would be someone being towed for recreational purposes. You can tow up to now two people for recreational purposes, whether it's two people on water skis, whether it's one person on water skis and the other person sitting on their shoulders in a pyramid, whether it's parasailing, although we have some regulations about that, height skiing, we have some regulations about that, wakeboarding, kneeboarding, barefoot, one ski, two skis, forwards, backwards, sideways. These are all different ways people can be towed for recreational purposes. The newest product on the market is a tube, it's inflatable, that sits three people. So people have these three person places that sit two that can be pulled behind the boat, but our current statutes only allow two people to be on the three person quote unquote two. And the devices that they make nowadays that are inflatable are not the same front tire inner tubes that we used to get pulled on a year or two ago. And so as the new products come out, this is these are the challenges that we're going to face. Um, so I, I share that with some clarification for everybody that calling for recreational purposes is the key phrase here. And whether it's two people, one person's on a small ski and one person's on a ski, one person's in a tube and one person's on a on a pair of regular snow uh, water skis. It's thank you. It's the number. Thank you. Excellent. Article four. Okay, this is Article four. Conduct at the town beach. Statement. Questions. Good. Excellent. Anything else that we have not discussed or you feel you must enhance carefully? Yes, sir. Like Armstrong 95 Lake Road, we are talking about Columbia Lake, correct? <laughs> I don't know where all this extreme boat traffic is coming from. I'm out there mornings, afternoon, evenings. And compared to when I was a, a teenager, there's no boat traffic anymore. You got six, seven boats, maybe at the max on Sunday. There's no extreme boat traffic anywhere on this lake compared to like Coventry Lake. That's extreme boat traffic. We practically have a mill pond over here. So um, that's my opinion that it's, there is, it's, it's not the way it used to be. It's practically everybody sits now on their porch, drinks coffee, looks at the water, looks at their boat at the dock, and goes to work. Nobody's on the lake. How many, how many lake homeowners have teenage silver? Six, seven family? That's it. I'm sorry, are you complaining? <laughs> the boat traffic is extreme. And I, I'm of the other opinion that there's practically nil compared to what it was 30, 40 years ago. I understand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, 87, I agree. I just said to Bill, where are all these boats everybody are saying? We don't see them anymore. Karen Lewis, 214, I totally agree. I was a teenager on the lake back in the 50s and boats were everywhere. Motor boats with kids, teenagers out in them. Yeah, for days, the whole day, until I got my license. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Again, I appreciate you coming. I know you want to 
One more comment. One more comment. Yeah, I think it's, I applaud the effort to um, create language that's comprehensive, user friendly, can all be on the same page, at least in our understanding of what the expectation is. However, I feel that we hit a hot button on certain ordinance and we ignore others. But we've always had for many years distinct clarification of how far your raft can be out and what you can have in terms of food. And I'm really, really aware of that because if you are in a self-propelled vessel, you are supposed to be able to navigate within 100 feet of shore, especially when there's ice on the water or it's beginning to form you like to be able to be there. And that really is very difficult to have happen today because you have language here for something called marking devices. And marking devices is one where it is in the article three. And those marking devices can be approved by the DEP or the Board of Selectmen. But the truth is we have marking devices that every property owner's own. And I would call the distinction that used to be a more the same language of what is allowed is you may have one raft or two moorings, but only a total of two items. So it can be a mooring and a raft, anything that's two. You can't have three. But what we have around the lake is a lot of territorial marking. That's what I would call a marking device, not a mooring. There are very few sailboat racers anymore with lightnings that moor their boats. What we have is people marking their territory, and we have many. And now there are those that are vertical, including at the public beach, which now we don't have to just push people out 100 feet. We have 100 feet for the swim line. We have the boats, and then we have these wake buoys. And they are mighty to navigate. And if I hit them, I will flip, which is why I switched the kayak in January, because I cannot navigate around people's moorings. I have hit people's lead pipes, which could hold right through my rowing shell. I have gone into people's moorings that are tubes, noodles, knots, and gotten the end of my shell harnessed in a way that I am now 15 feet away from that and can't get out. So my Concern is, can we just please say what a buoy is and what it is intention is? Because we have people that put their mooring 50 feet out to keep you away and another one at 100 feet. Well, how can I possibly take a 20 foot oar span and come through that? I cannot. So when you talk about safety of the lake, that's one thing to me that's not hard to measure. It's hard to tell if that swimmer's out swimming past 100 feet, but it's not hard to tell if your raft is more, more than 100 feet. Rafts are supposed to be 75. Not everybody is allowed at 75. If you're on a curve, you're not allowed at 75. You might have 45, yet we have people putting their raft right in the middle of the cove, and that is never addressed. So my question is, to me, if you are going to create an ordinance, if it is not enforced, then it's a difference without distinction. Why bother to create it if you're only going to enforce speed of power boats? There's a lot of things that are going on that I don't understand if we have a regulation. Why, in all the times that we're told, I don't know whose job it is, but if Patrolmen go around the lake and you can see a boat, a raft almost looks like it's floating away because it's so far from the property owner's home. Why is that not addressed? Why is it not addressed if someone has a raft and two buoys? So my concern is that if we're going to write these things, <coughs> who's enforcing them? Are we able to enforce them? Henry? Uh, that's come to the attention of the Lake Manning Study uh, Committee, and that's one of the reasons why this definition from the DEP is, is put in here now. Uh, if there will be activity this summer to um, call out the fact that you're entitled to whatever you're allowed under your mooring and raft permit if you are a homeowner, and anything else in the water that is not permitted uh, by that is uh, illegal because it's not 
covered by the ordinance. Nobody gave you permission to put it there. There's no uh, authority under state law or the town ordinance to do it, and they'll have to be removed. Hopefully, this will just be a matter of education, and every everybody will comply uh, smoothly. But there, it is a town Wonderful. Can it be described what a buoy actually is? Well, a buoy. Everybody, yes, that's also covered by state requirements. A mooring buoy. Uh, you know, is round and white and has a blue stripe around it. Uh, uh, winter buoys are a different thing. You know, so in the time you're rowing with the ice, you're, you may be risky. I don't row anymore in that time either. Uh, but uh, or you have to be offshore enough because I've certainly hit enough rafts myself. Uh, you can look at the front of my boat to know. Uh, <laughs> The the concept is the extra buoys will be taken off. The, the buoys that the town has at the town beach for the mooring area and the no wake zone are public safety things and they're covered by uh, state law and, and, and this ordinance. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Corey Lewis, 214 Route 87. Um, I just have a question in regards to the buoys. I noticed that there are some buoys, and I believe that they mark rocks that are relatively close. Is there a way we could get all the same types of markings for those rocks? Like, we put our own buoy out to mark a rock that's out in front. If someone comes through that doesn't know the lake, the area, they're going to damage their boat. So, I mean, if, I'm just curious, referring to those. How, how far from the shore is it? How far from the uh, sea wall? Well, the, we're on it in, like, you come in the cove. And the it's thing cool. is, if you're coming out of the cove, it's not far from the land, but I don't know. Um, maybe you know which one I'm talking about, or the son's house. And there's a couple in our house, but there's a couple other rocks that I know are marked, are the laser rocks that, you know, people mark them. So you do stay away from them. It would be covered by this ordinance and to, it would be appropriate to have a mark there, but it would have to get the permission uh, of the selectmen and it would have to conform to the standards that they has and there's a certain standard for what we to mark a hazard. And uh, we would love to have those hazards marked in, in, in that kind of uh, fashion to protect sailboats with centerboard and uh, uh, motorboats with props. Thank you. <laughs> Mike Armstrong, I thought they broke now that we're talking about buoys, why don't we get rid of the uh, traffic cones that are out there and put up legitimate hazard buoys? <laughs> well, I mean, we got orange road barrels from road construction, but out there for 50 years. Yeah, we got buoys, low, slow wake zones, all this stuff. We can't actual hazard in the lake, it's never marked. The, the issue with buoys is, is, is also a uh, subtle one in I that know. we can't put buoys at the island and do things like that without state permission. And we as a town have not liked the idea of calling on the state to uh, bother us uh, and worry about what they can tell us that we can't do that we want to do. Uh, and so uh, those particular traffic cones are grandfathered. Um, <laughs> you're telling me the traffic cones out there are for hazards? What they road mean? hazards. Yeah. 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 They're not. Too shallow. Okay, okay. so yeah. you just told me there's buoys designated for hazards. Right. They're not actually buoys. They're 
So we could change it, but we, again, we would have to go to the DEP and, and get permission to change it. And there's been changes to the authorized market. Yeah. It, it'd be, let me say it for the moment. Michael Nazo, I think you know what And I think everybody should see what a DEP marking, hazard marking looks like for, because it's it's substantial. <laughs> so I, you know, uh, Paul, did you uh, you have something? I was I was um, thinking about uh, the permitting of buoys and things. Um, currently, the permitting for any work on seawall dock, raft numbers of raft numbers of buoys that people can moorings that people can have, and that permitting process goes through LMAC, who reviews it and then makes recommendations to the selection for approval. Um, Supplemental buoys could also fall into that category and, and, and use the same process. So it's not something that would be very difficult to improve the process. Okay, thank you. All set. Okay. And which job? Which job? I'm going to have to do scuba diving and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> Dick, I won't. Um, <laughs> last one. Yes. Hi, um, Judy Preston again. I'd just like to commend the folks who labored over this effort mm -hmm. um, for clarification. And I think that turnout here is going to be Yeah. So uh, we're going to discuss these in the board of selectmen meeting, and, and if we come to common ground, we'll vote on them, put them in. Um, believe me, I understand what you're saying. During one conversation, I turned to our counterpart over here, and I said, "Listen, if we if we move forward with these, does that mean the 115 gets buried and it goes away? It's not. Okay. There's a lot of work to do on that. There's a ton of varying." opinions about that it's not something we throw in there and we sign forth on it tonight I, if that's I, I can't do it i just i don't have enough information okay but there's other stuff here that's going to be good for the the lake and people on the lake and everything else i wanted to find some 500 dollars to be honest with you and i wanted to give out tickets so it's a we're working in the right direction Yes, the Michael Nazem, thank you, Morgan Harris. Uh, just to give a little perspective, the horsepower limits were addressed 15, maybe 20 years ago. Yeah, so we're not going to change that. We're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're going to be able to we understand you. I understand. Just give me. I got to do a board select a meeting after this, so and I got to promise you guys to wait. Get on the way. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we're adjourned at eight forty-three. And notify that it is now the continuation. It's 747, April 16, Forsley County. What am I doing? I'm just following the regular number of city Forsley. Right in the board of select and meeting uh, to order. Um, we did the Pledge of Allegiance. We had audience of citizens in the last one. Unless anybody has something different. Great. Approval of the agenda. We have nothing to add, correct? Correct. All those in favor of approving the agenda, I suppose. Aye. Okay. No, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I make a motion we approve the minutes from the Board of Collection regular meeting April 2nd, 2024. Any discussion? Take three. Um, yeah, date line.
The one out of the back that said March, March 19th. 19th. But that's the one for April 7th. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Okay, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, rescind my motion and we're going to move to uh, old business. Yeah, so, so next time we'll have to hold business. Okay. All right, we just had a big discussion. So we can vote on Okay, so we need to discuss this. I for one, I think I'm pretty from what I heard, the discussion, we're pretty clear on what we're looking to do here. And I also felt that we were pretty in sync with what the LMAC and the committee had put together for these ordinances. Uh, I'm not comfortable moving ahead with any kind of change in the in the uh, horsepower that we allow on the lake. It needs further discussion for me to have any kind of real um, change if we do anything. What I, like I said, the fact finding that I heard that it's good, it's not good for the bottom, it's good for this, it's it's just all over the place and I can't put my finger on it. The overriding consistent message is they don't build them anymore. So if they don't build them anymore, we have to somehow allow people to propel their boats. So something to think about the future. Um, I, I'm I'm all set. I'm in favor of moving forward with the change from Miss Robinson's discussion of her rowing skull or whatever shell, and then uh, moving it from vessel to a motorboat. Motor. And we've got clarity; we can do that. <clears throat> Other than that, I don't think there's much we I see changing in there. Mike, I know he does. Okay. You got anybody? Yes, Chris. Chris. So, what if someone has a boat that they take the motor off and now they skirt the new ordinance? So, I guess I would recommend that it's either a motorboat or capable of being a motorboat, something along that, along that line. So, if you have someone who, you know, Park something that we wouldn't want on there and did they kick the motor off, but it has other, I don't know, just throwing it out there. How are they getting from the launch to their dock? Towing it? Well, I guess they could tow it. Um, Henry? Um, we can, you know, take that under further study and, uh, uh, you know, make further amendments, but the concern is if we don't move forward or something, time frame. Uh, we got the time. That it is possible that somebody could throw a 28 foot, uh, well, sailboat, or they could throw, what, but a sailboat 28 foot long usually has a motor in it. But if they don't have a motor in it, it could still be there. We didn't want to keep big sailboats off. To, uh somebody could throw a 28 foot pontoon boat in and tow it somewhere and tie it up to the dock and have a patio that our dock regulations don't allow. But I would think we would then try to enforce the dock regulations and say that that's not a you're, you're saying telling me it's not a motorboat. Uh well we're we're calling it a dock extension. Yeah. Or we're calling it if you're mooring it out in the water, it's a raft that's the wrong side. You know, so there are potential ways to get at it. I think there's a way to get around there. What if, what if anything over 26 has to come before the board selection for an exemption, such as a stall? You have a 20 stall board president, that's fine. We could. we could write it that way. And I think that the, the, the uh, DEP would likely accept it because it fits in with the concept of uh getting uh, an exception and having uh the uh board of selectmen rule on it uh, it, it does the, the issue with that is it doesn't leave you with any standard 
to apply uh, in trying to rule on whether they get an exception or not. But I think you would be able to fall back on the concept of public safety uh, and, and uh, the same types of things that we consider important on the dock regulations. I'll have to make a recommendation once that we just said all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we vote on it tonight. No, my point is for the exception rule. I'll make it. Could more vote for the 26th method? Could uh, we would have to put the, the simple and accepted language in to get this to the DEP? Henry, you have a you have a simple accepted. Yeah, let me look out. I'll, I'll look at that and I'll give you. Uh, one minute more thing, just a moment. Okay. Anybody else? Who? I, you, he addressed it with the sale moment. Okay. So let me just see how this would read if we did it. I don't know. The 26th I would suggest that you leave the sentence of the 26th quarter the vessel as it is, and then let Henry author another sentence of the previous sentence. Yeah. So we have to put it, I'm going to do that now so that we can uh, have it voted on. Right. Um, Okay. Yeah, that's number, that's Article 2, right? Article 3, no change to be made. Anybody discussion? Did we hear anything about Article 3? Did I get it right? Um, there was discussion on the time. Safety regulation. Um, so any water skier, we're saying with the word water skier, is that DEP definition, right? Okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't. It's noted in the definition. Yes, it is. And it is. I didn't. Uh, I didn't write anything down for Article Three, so it must have been okay. In Article Four, conduct at the town B. We didn't have anything there. No. I'm just waiting for every paragraph H. But if he goes over H and adds another one, it's going to have to be all read mark. I'm going to just say any motorboat exceeding 26 feet in length is listed in the original title is prohibited to walk down the lake. Motorboats exceeding 26 feet in prior to November 2nd, 2023 must be listed valid posted exemption sticker for section 190. In addition, any vessel over 26 feet that is not a motor, that is not motorized, would need board of selectment approval um, for authorization to be on the way. That work? I am just talking. I, I think it, it, it uh, is not the direction I was going in, but I think it'll work 
what it'll do is we'll then get it polished by the DEP and they'll come back and tell us um, if they need to have that tweaked and then you can amend it presumably in uh, uh, you know, June okay. without, without having to. I'll never remember what I said if you talk. I'm sorry, I got it, we're good. All right. Wait, we have to type down what you said. I'm going to say it again. Okay, we're ready, and then it'll be recorded. It's a recording. Oh, that's a recording. Is that? Excellent. <laughs> and then so it's a miracle. <laughs> all right. So we're okay. It was two, three, and four. Right. We're good. Anybody else? All right. We can get the motion from the record. Okay. I move that pursuant to sections 3.3 alpha 1 of the charter, the Board of Selectmen hereby adopt the proposed amended and restated ordinance entitled Lake and Beach Use Article 2, Vessels on Columbia Lake, including section 190-2 to 190-1, inclusive as presented with the following Change 190-6, paragraph H, hotel. Any motor boat exceeding 26 feet in length as listed on its original title is prohibited to launch on the lake. Motor boats exceeding the 26 foot limit prior to November 2nd, 2023, must possess a valid posted exemption sticker per section 190-6I, India. With the change, oh, in addition, any vessel. any vessel over 26 feet must have board of select board of selectmen approval prior to launch. Why don't you throw in board of selectmen approval based on public safety map, uh, matters? Just to have a standard. That's the motion. Okay. Any discussion? You want to move to the next one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second one, pursuant to section 3.3 alpha 1 of the Charter, Board of Selectmen hereby adopts the proposed amended and restated ordinance entitled Lake and Beach Use Article 3, Safety Regulations on Columbia Lake, including sections 190-11 to 190-17, inclusive as presented. And pursuant to section 3.3 alpha 1 of the Charter, the Board of Selectmen hereby adopt the proposed amended and restated ordinance entitled Lake and Beach Use Article 4, Conduct at the Town Beach, including sections 190-18 to 190-23, inclusive as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Inclusive both aye. Great. Those passes 5-0. Mm -hmm. All set? Yes, sir. Is now we're moving to 6 3? No, 6 2. Okay, that's that. So, you want to hear about the town week and the key program? Stick around. Um, <laughs> I do. Okay, so LMAC, we, we tasked LMAC to come up with an, an answer for the keys. Uh, and, and I'm going to read the motions. These came from LMAC. We looked them over in the office. We sent them out. But I also want you to know that we're enhancing the camera activity for availability down at the town beach and the launch area. Okay. I think that in listening to LMAC in their meeting last week, the fishermen truly have a great sense of pride for being on the lake. Uh, they have great pride in their boats and they do watch their boats probably more than most anybody, but they do take it on and off the lake more than anybody also. But uh, 
I felt we had, with OMAC's recommendation, come up with a short-term temporary basis, and it says it in here. So, um, but it does get a little more teeth in being able to take care of things. Motion one, in a short term on a temporary basis, LMAC advises board selection to reinstate the gate key program with the following changes to better enforce the gate key inspection regulations when the violations occur. So is this a motion? Yeah. Motion one, to eliminate the street three strike enforcement portion of the regulations, replacing it with an immediate forfeiture of one's gate key for a rolling 12 month period of time as ordered by the Board of Selectmen. And for a second offense, immediate forfeiture of the gate key with the potential for not having asset access to the lake for an indefinite period of time as determined by the Board of Selectmen with no less than a rolling 12 month period of time. Recreation or other town employees as designated by the Board of Selectmen will be required to record, monitor, and document camera footage of all launches on a daily basis. And motion two, as the town enforces the above revised policy changes, LMAC advises the Board of Selectmen to authorize and install a system. That's it, right? And we're not and we're sending motion to. So we're gonna we're going to this is terrible. Bottom line is we're gonna go back to the key program. We're going to monitor it. We're gonna do more training with the uh gate people down there that are doing the inspections, and we're gonna have more cameras to be able to um see any infractions and we have more ability to take them off the lake for a 12 month period of time one more. what one more one more so they'll so they'll be able to get on with the key they'll get keys to be able to get on the lake yep and then how often are the are those going to be monitored just you know, how people well, once they get on the lake they're not taking them off that's okay but um how like when is it going to be people at the gate to kind of? Um, we have a specific hour to schedule them. And when we're not, when the marine control is not there, the director of recreation and the assistant man the gate. I, I mean, it's a, it's a tough thing to do, but it's just, I'm just curious how often there would be somebody there. Yeah. In, in, in that meeting, I would, what surprised me. Was that it was said, and everybody agreed that the problem with the weeds and stuff we have in Columbia Lake, they're not invasive. They are nuisance. A new yes, a nuisance from Connecticut here in Connecticut. They're a nuisance. Um, but they're native. What? They're native. But they're na yeah, native. So they're and, there. And everybody understood we need to keep it that way as long as we can. So uh, the fishermen were adamant, the, the LMAC was adamant, and we all had the same kind of goal, and uh, we're just going to have to do a better job at the launch. Okay. Any other discussion from the board? So I, I guess that was a, a motion. I said a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. You're opposed? Yep. Okay. Uh, four to one. When we do audience of citizens, please bring up your comment. Um, so six that we we asked we had some citizens in town who asked for uh, the ability to help Columbia. I talked about this earlier. Neighbors helping neighbors. We've got some people with engineering backgrounds, different backgrounds. They've asked to be to fill a committee, which basically the board of selectmen asked to do when people started coming forward and um, to help with their engineering backgrounds, to help with some ideas for culvert and bridge and water flow and diversion to try and help out because 
Our culverts and roads are being washed away slowly but surely. Um, too many roads are being over flooded because of the amount of rain and uh, our roads are old and so is our, 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 our water displacement system. So um, notice went out to people and I'll just read that this charge, this is the charge of the committee. The charge of this committee is to review and prioritize problem drainage issues in the town. Input with high level evaluation and creative solutions provided to the town engineer consultant consultant for their consideration and director of public works review. The subcommittee members that have said that they would serve are Bob Miller, Mary Roybal, Dave Geiser, and Paul Cordenoa. Mike Curtis and James Santos have not yet responded. Uh, we had one who declined. This is just a committee to just really give the board of selectmen ideas. It's not to take what they say as gospel because we have to go, we have to work with our Department of Public Works to see if they can do the work or if they even agree with it. But then we have to get it and get a blessing from the town engineer because if we do something in the committee that's really has no power and, and we get it wrong, we're liable. So we always have to pass it through the town engineer, but at least we're not going, you know, Tell us what we have to do. We bring, hopefully, solutions to that after we, the town, is able to come up with that. So, uh, anybody have a change for the charge on this committee? All good? Thank you. Do I need anything? No, nope, all good. Just to make a motion to accept I motion to accept the charges for the subcommittee for the Columbia Road and Culvert evaluations. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. And the members, Mr. Peter, are accepted. They're accepted. Yeah. Great. New business. 2024, vote more in Rodley. Um, better have the right. Good, good news. We have everyone to put in for a vote morning. We'll get their morning. Uh, we can have more than we uh, could accept. Everyone that put in for a in the water high up is in. That's no problem. We have one extra for the rack. On the um, kayak rack on land. So um, I'll just pick out what company can I pick that are in. Um, eight. Okay, so there's the one that didn't make it. We got more up there? One more than we have. And what we'll do with this afternoon, we'll, maybe we can try to find a place to. What's my name? We'll try to find a way to have that kayak rack somehow. But at the moment, we only have the number eight, and Richard Ranger didn't make it so far. We'll try to get creative for right now. So the rest of the people got something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they'll be notified. Yeah. That's it. Discussion regarding the municipal advisor request for proposal. Legal seconds. We got the minutes. When did we just come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My order. Uh, you want to talk about this, please? Yeah. Okay. okay. So we went out to the market. We needed a. We had bond council, uh, which was able to help us write all the language to get the um. The town to accept the referendum. The main project was the H track project, which the language was written by Bond Council. The next step, if we do get the grant from the state, would be to prepare to go out to Bond. And at the same time, we've had other projects that have come up, like uh, Pine Creek Culvert and Thompson Hill Culvert, that we uh, might need to add to the Bond, plus maybe some other road work uh, that we would add on as well. Uh, we'll need a municipal advisor to accomplish that. Um, the three municipal advisors companies that responded to our RP was uh, the Phoenix Advisor Group out of Milford, Connecticut, uh, the municipal, municipal advisory group called Unistat out of Madison, Connecticut, and Unibank. Unibank Financial Advisor Group. Um, I think they're out of New Jersey. 
or Massachusetts. They're not Massachusetts. So um, reviewing both proposals, the um, the cost of the three um, Phoenix advisors and Munistat were very similar, thousand dollars here or there. Um, and the way they approach the bonds with the minimum and maximum, depending on the new bond issue or, or a re revised bond issue. Um, Unibank was a little different. They had cost per million. Um, Unibank was almost all Massachusetts. They had two towns in Connecticut. We, I asked Bev to go out to finance directors and they all came back. I think four came back very strong for Munistat. And one came back very strong for Phoenix Advisors, and one said they worked with Unibank. But when you look at the state map, um, Munistat is most of the East Coast by us, and Phoenix is more of the West Coast of Connecticut. Um, that matters. I personally worked with Munistat in East Adam, and the recommendation I have because Phoenix. Advisors with a very good presentation as well as that we bring both of these, Munistat and Phoenix, in to interview them uh, with the board. If the board doesn't want a subcommittee of the board selectmen, then Bev and I, because Bev and I will mostly be working with them. Any questions, discussion? I was looking at the compensation and the fees mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because I'm totally ignorant. Is this a private placement? Is it a bond insurance? What is this that we're looking for? Well, it depends. Uh, that's where the municipal advisor comes in. If the market's not right for a public uh, launching of a bond and they feel a private would be better, uh, and that has to do with the, the rates in our standing. Although with the review that we looked at, our, our standing is really, really good. Um, we would have to have our rating be done because we don't have any bond issues right now. So because we have no debt, because our per capita is high, because our ratios are really good of, of general fund to revenue, I think we'd have a very good rating. So I, I don't think we'd have to do a private, but those are just depending on how we actually go out the market and buy. So what is the interest rate? That all depends on the market. It depends on when we do it. Right. And how, how, risk, how less risky we are as a town to invest in. You know, if we're a, a really low risk town, we'll get a better rate. Now, what would you look at? We've got three here. I know there's always a cost you look at, which is the least expensive, but what else would you look at? What benefit do you have with these guys? You're, you want to work with the company that can package us the best to go out the market, to get the lowest rate, and to achieve a bond issue with any stress to Beverly, myself, or the board is like. Because it's it's not an easy issue in the bond. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, so what? And so they get a percentage of um, and go and looking at the, the big picture, they get a percentage of whatever I'm borrowing. No, they have they, they have the rates and how they'll be paid. The but then the unknown costs are the issuance costs. We'll have to find out where those line up. But I think all these questions are best answered by the municipal advisors who we have in the Just to understand the processes. Well, uh, I'd probably just bring them in to start. You know, I I don't have a preference on it. Either. <coughs> so, yeah, <laughs> You have here, you want Phoenix advisors and units staff to come in. Great, that's my opinion. You okay with that? As a financial director. All right, so we're going to invite uh, Phoenix and the units in. We're two out of the three. Anybody have a strong feeling any other way? Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, I'm, the next one is the uh, walkway. At the beach paver walkway, which leads up to the boathouse, needs to be repaired. And uh, the HVAC system at the town hall needs to be closed up. So I move to approve the proposed closeout 
of the presented American Relief Funds project as of 4-10-2024 by allocating, allocating additional funding from available American Relief Funds to go toward beach paver walkway repairs and, and the closeout is the Town Hall 8 set project. Any questions? Uh, where will that leave us when that's all done with our money? We'd like to share. I'm um, afraid that it's about 10,000, but once the other project comes out, there's not going to be more. Right. Okay. So we're about 10 and we'll grow up a little when the other one close out, but we still have a little bit to spend. So, uh, any more any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Five to Thank you. The Republican Town Committee has done this before. They'd like to have a flag sale at the transfer station on two dates, May 27th and September 2nd. I move to approve the Republican Town Committee to hold two flag sales at the transfer station on May 27th and September 22nd, or excuse mm -hmm. me, September 2nd, uh, 2023. Any discussion? They did a good job the last time, no problems. So, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. Great. Uh, the next item is there's uh, a woman who worked for Veterans Affairs, handled the Veterans Affairs, I believe it was in Marlboro. Yeah, uh, I believe she came from Marlboro. She is now retired. But, um, she has sent us notification from Route 66 from Portland all the way through Columbia. They, she has asked every town to put up flags, American flags, for honoring the first responders who were killed in 9-11. So uh, I move to approve the donation of $800 towards purchasing 425 flags that would be displayed on Route 66 from September 7th through September 14th each year honoring first responders who were killed on 9-11. I think we could do it one year, see how we're going. But, uh, and, so that's the most, I have a question. You have to add Elvin, Elvin, Little Flood. Little Flood, whatever. Yeah, the, the meetings. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Yeah, one town actually bought it in 10 years. 12 by 18. So they're sizable. Okay. You just put them on the road. Who's picking them up? We didn't figure all that out. This just, just hit me the other day. You two guys, we brought this to my attention. How long do you have? Any discussions? Can the Republican Town Committee donate the flags? No, no, no. no they're broke. Depends on how many they sell at their transfer stations now. Yeah. But I might be able to get a better You should go on vacation more often, Bill. You got jumps. That's good. <laughs> That's because he's rested and relaxed. All those in favor? I, oh. I think it's a great idea. So, <laughs> Judy just volunteered to put them up. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's watch it. I move to approve the transfer of about $619 as presented. Yeah. Nothing out of the ordinary. All those in favor for transfer? Aye. Aye. Uh, no refunds. Uh, and I move to approve the payment of bills totaling $133,960.39, consisting of 2324 emergency, 2324 regular, credit cards, and paychecks. How is the street sweeping? Sweeping. It's sweeping. We got to the play. The only thing I hear is that it's blocking traffic. You it's that? Yeah, yeah, complaints. That's true. It's, 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 it's
I was out and I saw Hunt Road yesterday. It's it's beautiful. They may have to do a little skim coat of asphalt over there, but honestly, it looks pretty good. We're almost there. Yeah. 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 It's going to be open soon, too. Uh, and I saw three driveways that were washed away on my way over. So that's okay. I did a lot of driving there, so it's terrible out there. Okay. Um, um, anybody else questions on this? What is this overpayment of sped access cost? What is that? State of Connecticut. Specialist, so so when the school put in an estimate of their special ed cost in the fall, um, they have to follow up in from March and update the numbers. Well, the numbers went down. So some kids that were originally qualified for the access cost no longer qualified, but the state had already paid us the money, so they said give it back. So it's funny, they, the child didn't qualify for the excess cost, but they still got the services that cost the excess? So originally in the fall, they qualified because the projected costs were above the limit. Like you have to have 80000 to qualify for an excess cost. So now there's been a change, so now it's less. So the state is asking for it back now, which is it like because if they waited until next fall, they were taking it out of the ECS grant. So either way, they're going to get it. Yeah. Okay. It's the first time they've ever done it. Anybody else? Anybody? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of paying the bills? Aye. Aye. Interactive show that I mentioned. Audience of citizens, yes, sir. I just want to add one comment on the, the launch where we about, uh, also wanted to sign it, like the initial sign it, but uh, for the fishermen that are coming in, several of them had indicated there's another guy pulling in behind me. He just wants me to leave the gate open and they get into battle. So we were, we had talked about some. Sign is one key, one part of that kind of thing. Okay, thank you. That's well. Makes sense. Anybody else? I need the system. Uh, board member comments. Can I make one? You should get me. Sure. No, go ahead. So, um, this uh, hats off to the Lions. They just lit our our sign at the end of the green with a, a whole lighting project and they're going to light the historic sign too and you know, yes. they, but they also ripped out the rhododendrons that got out of control around the gazebo and they're doing a whole planning scheme so it's really going to whack the light so we're no more Okay, so at this time I'm going to suspend the board select on meeting and move into the get exactly the session where I would ask Mark Walton to today. Do we keep those guys online? Yeah. Okay. One second. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I'll be with Jerry. Uh Mary Roy for Thank you. Oh, you're right. I got to do it. With Ash. Make a motion. Yeah. All right. I make a motion that we authorize uh, Mark Walter, town administrator, to um, to rent a dumpster for services. Uh, yeah. Any any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And we came out of the extra session at 841. Um, into the board session. Yep. And so at this time, no other no other business. Meeting is adjourned. All those in favor. Aye. 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 When are you coming back, Ralph?
Friday.